Today we're going to talk about what happens when you accidentally enable DLR on a compact Logix PLC or any DLR capable PLC, and you're not actually on a DLR network. Now we have some videos coming that actually talks about configuring DLR networks, but this is a really common thing that I think all of us is kind of one of those rite of passage things, I guess, that curiosity gets the best of us is if you go into your program, and this works for any program that has DLR capable PLC, such as the one that comes on your PLC trainer. And while you're online, go to edit controller properties. And we're going to go to the network tab. And we have enable supervisor. And it was funny. I was just talking to Just Vargas with uh, Trace Route the other day about this. Is, you know, I'm like, yeah, a lot of people end up checking that box. And he's like, that's funny. I, I've always asked, why the world would anybody check that box? Well, curiosity gets the best of us. And sounds cool to be a supervisor. Now, I want us to understand a little bit about what happens here and why um, this can really choke your network. So a couple of very important things for you to do this is one, do not be on your plant network when you do this. Also, if you're at a school, probably make sure that your trainer is unplugged because chances are IT is going to come screaming at you or me. And you might want to have a USB A to B cable ready just in case it gets really bad. But let's talk just basically about what happens here is if we cancel this, you may not have the scale and Ethernet switch in your configuration. So let's use the web browser. Let's go to your scale and Ethernet switch, which your default trainer will be 192.168.1.16. Now mine is all 192.168.20.198. And then go ahead and log in and if you're not sure about your password, then look at the beginning of this chapter where we talked about what the default password is and how to change it. And inside the information area, let's go to Ethernet statistics. And this gives you tons of fun information, and we're going to learn a lot about this in upcoming videos. But for today, we're just going to click on the packet type. And we're going to go ahead, when we're going to refresh, I'm not refresh, we're going to reset our counters just to get us fresh out of the box. And the program that I have in here is doing minimal communications. But if you had one that was doing a lot, you would see these numbers incrementing more. But mainly, you have unicast traffic, and that's traffic that has a specific place that you want it to go. So we're telling it really, ultimately, an IP address or something that this is where I want you to go. And then we have what we're going to call non-unicast, which mostly consists of broadcast and multicast traffic. This one right here is going to, well, multiple devices, but maybe not all devices. This one right here is really just a megaphone blasting on your network. And if we hit the refresh button again, now we're going to see we are getting some multicast and broadcast traffic. And mainly up here, though, these numbers are pretty much zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Studio 5000 program, and we are going to go to Edit and Controller Properties. And then we're going to go to the Network tab. And we have this Enable Supervisor Mode button. We're going to go over here, and I'm not going to hit this button yet. I'm going to go back to the screen capture. I'm going to hit the Reset Counter button. And then I'm going to bring a 30-second timer in, and I'm just going to hit Play on that. Right as it comes down to zero, I am going to hit the Refresh button. And so this is a 30-second sample. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make just a copy of this. So I am going to grab this information right here, and we're just drag that screen over. We'll come back to it in just a second. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hit the Enable Supervisor Mode button, and notice there was no real resounding warning or anything. I kind of think there should be here. But now we're going to hit the Apply button, and now we're going to go over here and hit Reset on our counter, and then we'll go here, and we're going to start our timer. And we'll give this 30 seconds, 
of sample. And while we're waiting on this, if we just go over here and try to click on something, well, actually, it's not. Oh, there it goes. It's actually got a huge delay in it. The screen's not even actually updating. But okay, so now we'll go over here. Since we're coming down on the end, we're going to hit our refresh button. Oops, barely we get a nice little sound when we hit our timer. And now let's bring in our original sample compared to this one. So without that enabled, we have zero multicast packets coming out of the PLC. With that enabled, in 30 seconds, we had roughly 85,000 packets. Now, we're going to learn more about how these packets work and why that's actually a good thing if you're on a DLR-enabled network. But without being on a DLR-enabled network, this can become a nightmare. And so I'm going to uncheck this box. And even notice there, there's a huge delay. And we're going to hit the apply button. And eventually, hopefully it responds. There it goes. Now it's funny. We get a warning to disable DLR. You just don't get it on the enable. And I'm going to click yes to that. And immediately after that, notice everything starts responding well again. Really, we end up flooding our network with these multicast packets. And that is why you only want to enable the supervisor mode when you are actually setting up a DLR network. Now, since we're talking about DLR, I've created this playlist right here with some of those more advanced networking topics. Click here to follow me over there.